Um, so as you'll see, this is a one-person panel at the moment. <laughs> the the uh, other two speakers are on their way from uh, Hamburg and are stuck in traffic, so they should be here in like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but I thought rather than just waiting for them, we could actually start having a conversation because I think this is a pretty interesting topic. Um, my name is uh, Steve Williams. I also perform live techno as Drew's Noise, and I'm part of a collective called Berlin Modular Society, where we put on uh, live electronic events uh, once a month. So for me, this is a really interesting topic because, yeah, I make money if people show up to my events. It's kind of as basic, basic as that. Um, so uh, uh, Nicholas and uh, Christoph are going to talk a little bit about some of their experience with event marketing and some of the new technologies they see. Uh, but before we get here, before they get here, I thought we could kick off a conversation. And just before we get into that, I'm really curious actually to see who's in the room. So maybe kind of put up, put up your hand if you're a DJ or a producer. Okay, so that's roughly half. And uh, put up your hand if you're uh, running a club or running a festival kind of thing. Okay, and what about if you're uh, not running a club but putting on nights that happen at clubs or, or, or festivals? Okay, okay, cool. Um, and uh, anyone else I missed? Any other sort of music category? Okay, if you didn't put up your hand, what kind of person are you? <laughs> <laughs> not in like, not in like super personal detail, but like <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm a manager. Okay. 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 Cool. 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 Great. Uh, Sorry, artist manager. Okay. So, so we have a couple of artist management as well. Okay. Artist manager um, and put, uh, artist booker also. Okay, okay. Artist management and booker. Okay, cool, cool. Any, anyone else? Oh, so, sorry, just in the back. Yeah, I'm, I'm also in marketing, social media, PR, and we uh, do events sometimes as well. So okay. Digital marketing in general. Okay, okay. Very great. And uh, so you just have to wait for the mic to come up here because, yeah, they're, they're recording the session just so you know. So think about that before you say whatever you're going to say. Uh, I'm I'm a label owner and I'm just starting my own parties. Right. Okay. So that's I'm curious about this uh, conference. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. So uh, I mean, one of the things that interested me is. Uh, one more. Oh, sorry. One more. I didn't see that, sir. <laughs> so I am DJ and producer, but actually I, pl I work at the ticketing company as well. Okay. So interesting. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I should apologize if I miss someone. I played a. a live set last night from midnight till 1.30 and then I had to pack up my gear and take it all home. So I'm not 100% caffeinated yet. So <laughs> please feel free to interrupt me. Um, so maybe before, yeah, just, just sort of a bit, bit of background that might sort of connect. So I'm, I'm from Canada. I've been sort of part of the rave scene since I guess like 1993, which you can tell from my gray hair. But uh, most of that time on the dance floor side, and I've just been playing, uh, playing live and producing for the last few years. So for me, it's, it's really interesting, this idea of the revolution of event marketing, because back when I first started in parties, event marketing was postcard flyers that had a phone number on it. And at 10 o'clock that night, the answering machine would get turned on, you'd call a phone number and it would tell you where the party was and you'd go to the warehouse and the party would go until the police came. Uh, and then you do the same thing again the next night. Um, and it's really interesting now with all these kind of different uh, venues. So. I guess one of the things I'm interested to sort of know from you. So the title of this talk is Revolution of Event Marketing, and you're all here. So I'm curious, like, do you think that there needs to be a revolution in event marketing? Do we need one? Like, what, why? I'm curious kind of why you're here. So anyone can grab the mic and, and talk. Um, yeah, I think what really would be important, especially coming out of the, like in this specific year, mm -hmm. I don't want to say like we're completely over the pandemic, it depends where you are, but you know, it feels like this is going to be the most normal summer we've had in mm -hmm. three years. At the same time, it's not normal at all, like events, right. uh, depending on where you look, but everyone's kind of struggling, especially financially, everything got more expensive, mm -hmm. people buy tickets way too late, so you have that big gap of having to pay all of your suppliers because now also they've also not had any work. So they all want the money up front, mm -hmm. but then you don't have the stick itself because they all pay late. So there's mm -hmm. like a massive gap in between that. And also there are so many factors influencing people to go to events. Like, I don't know, some people don't have money or they, they're a bit scared to go into crowds again, or they think, oh, I'm not gonna buy something for September. Who knows what's gonna happen? 
I don't know, like things that are in Croatia or something, maybe people might be worried about the war and, you know, that like, let's say like areas that are closer to conflict. So I think there are a lot of factors that also from a marketing point of view make it really difficult to say, why is my ticket sale not going? Like, do they not like the lineup or is it one of those other thousand factors? Like, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to, mm -hmm. to tell if your campaign is crap or if it's right. just out of your control, you know? Right. Right. So I think from that point of view, it's, yeah, there needs to be some kind of revolution mm -hmm. or approach to it right. okay. to, to hope, hopefully fix it. Cool. Yeah, that, that's interesting. I think there was an article on Resident Advisor just yesterday or the day before on, on, on that exact thing. With all the, They were focusing more on, on festivals, but yeah, people all around Europe talking about that. Yeah, people waiting. I think that, and it was interesting because uh, since Resident Advisor sells tickets, they actually had some stats. So they were sort of talking about how many days closer to the event people were buying, how, uh, what, I can't remember the numbers, but what, at like X percent fewer advanced ticket sales. And yeah, and, fest and there's been a couple of festivals that have just, stop because they weren't able to to sort of meet their their sales yeah yeah or even cancel like yeah, yeah. i live in amsterdam and we have a big celebration called king's day it's like the you celebrate the king and uh, audio obscura which is one of the biggest events they actually had to cancel because they didn't have enough ticket sales so they're like yeah we just scrapped the event it's not worth trying to make it happen which mm -hmm. is insane because they're one of the biggest event organizers that we yeah. that we have yeah. Cool. Interesting. Any other, any other thoughts on why we need a revolution in event marketing? Or maybe why we need better? Okay, <laughs> maybe rephrase it. So you're here at a session on event marketing. So maybe what are the kind of things that you're hoping to learn or problems you're looking to fix or things that you've run into? Not everyone at once. Yeah. Not everyone at once. Or you could flip that around, actually, because I'm also curious if you've seen the opposite of that, anything that's working really well, either from events that you've run or things that you've actually seen uh, around uh, event marketing, things that are different or unique that are, that are happening that you think other sh people should be aware of? Yeah, just, just behind you there. Thank you. So actually, I think it's uh, maybe from the other point of view, it's like there are so many parties going on right now. Mm -hmm. And there are so many new formats which were created during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it's like in electronic music, you have so much more um, going on Instagram, new trends mm -hmm. which are, we are created. So actually it's quite difficult to um, just cope with this uh, competition everywhere. So it's like really interesting to find new ways mm -hmm. to pro promote your events. And, and when you say competition, do you mean like real life parties are competing with live streams and other hybrid events and those kind of things? Real parties. Okay. So it's like there are so many of them. And even Hamburg, where I come, mm -hmm. come from, you have so many parties every weekend. So mm -hmm. you actually, you can never know where the people will go and if your party is going to work out because mm -hmm. that's so, so difficult right now. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe pass the mic over to the back there. No, no, no. Okay. The person behind you is, uh, yeah. <laughs> And actually, I should have said before, maybe you could actually just uh, introduce yourself with, with, with just with your uh, name, just so we kind of know each other a little bit. Hi, I'm Dan from Evolved Artists in the UK. So the one thing that I would say that I've noticed coming out of the pandemic is that the game has fundam fundamentally changed. Um, the big players that were the major promoters across Europe across the last five, ten years, they were all major conglomerates. Um, and I think the, what you're seeing now is a consequence of something that's built been building up within the industry for years, which is the fact that these big companies are slow to pivot, they're slow to change, mm -hmm. and the pandemic has revolutionized um, the way that people consume dance music, mm -hmm. the way that people frequent dance music, and what it is that consumers want now. Right. And these big companies, you know, they're not able to sell the, the same kind of numbers of volumes of tickets because they're doing the same thing as they did before the pandemic. Mm -hmm which is no lang longer accessible anymore. People don't want the same thing. Mm. You know, pe people, people's going, ha out, out, going out, habits have changed. Mm. A lot of people don't want to be necessarily amongst huge crowds yet. Mm. They don't feel confident and comfortable enough. Right. And some people are more happy to just consume things in a virtual or digital or hybrid space. Mm -hmm. So I think ultimately the question isn't necessarily how can the, the big conglomerates become successful again mm -hmm. because actually maybe their time's through. Mm -hmm. 
Maybe it's time for smaller, more medium-sized parties that are a bit more bespoke, that are a bit more unique, mm -hmm. that cater towards a more kind of boutique audience. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the route that clubbing is going to go now. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think it has to be an either or zero sum game. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the, the electronic scene has evolved over many, many decades. Mm -hmm. um, and it will always continue to evolutionize and revolutionize. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a positive, positive thing. Yeah. Um, necessarily, I understand that people's jobs throughout the pandemic were hugely put at risk. And some companies have made it out, some companies haven't. Mm -hmm. But that's just the nature of change. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think the fact that companies are slow to pivot and slow to adapt, mm -hmm. that's the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not necessarily what is a solution to that really, because mm -hmm. if they truly, truly cared about the clubbing culture and clubbing revolution worldwide, mm -hmm. they'd find some way to truly understand what it is that people want, mm -hmm. rather than just kind of trying to give people what they think that they want. Mm -hmm. I think that's fundamentally the issue right. overall. Mm -hmm. So whether or not it needs a revolution when it comes to the marketing aspect, I think I think that's already taken place mm -hmm. online. And I think people are more savvy now to marketing campaigns. They don't necessarily want to be sold directly to anymore. Mm -hmm. They want to be sold in an indirect manner, mm -hmm. in a more kind of boutique, more holistic, more approachable way. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a challenge for big companies, how to tap into that mentality mm -hmm. when that's not how you're structured as a business model. Right. Yeah, I, that, that's very interesting because, I mean, we, we found a similar kind of thing. Like, I, I, I live in Berlin and, yeah, on, on Resident Advisor, on, on an average Saturday, there's like 75 events that you can <laughs> you can go to. Um, and pre-pandemic, it was quite interesting. They're all Berlin clubs. But for a lot of the lineups, like half the people are not from Berlin. Like, they're they're flying in from all over the place. And it was quite interesting, like, when some of the clubs, when there was those little pockets of reopening sort of during the lockdown, and but DJs from the states couldn't fly because of different rules, or and, and it, which was kind of sad if you wanted to see those DJs. But it opened up this opportunity that there's a wealth of I don't know how many people here live in Berlin, but like we're in a music school here, there's a million and one DJs and promoters and producers and everybody here. So it does kind of open up that opportunity. And for us, we've we've definitely found that for the event marketing, really looking at building that kind of direct connection. So certainly working within the modular synth community, which is a pretty tight, uh, welcoming, open community anyway, everybody wants to see their friends play. Everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to walk up and sort of look at the gear and sort of what, what modules are using, that kind of thing. So that gives us a bit of, and, and we're not we're not trying to peel people away from Berghain or Trezor, like that's not really what we do. Um, but there is, but some of our artists, if they develop, they could play there in, in one of Berghain's live sets because they usually have like one or two live sets a weekend. So, yeah, it's interesting, but that's a very different bottom-up approach to marketing where a lot of our artists talk to everybody and answer questions and sort of do demos and that, that kind of thing. So it's, yeah, very much engaging with people as, yeah, as fans and enthusiasts of so being part of that community rather than doing a big uh, marketing blast. So, but I'm, I'm not sure if that approach would still work if we wanted to sell tickets for a 10,000-person festival. So, Yeah. Any other thoughts on what you've seen that's working or not working or the implications of how some of the things are changing? Yeah. Yeah, one more. Yep. Yeah. What I observed is like there are many telegram groups mm -hmm. with small parties. So that's mm -hmm. a thing when you make like a small PayPal link and then you send money to, to the promoter like for friends and family so they don't have to pay the uh, some fees to PayPal, mm -hmm. and there is a list with people who can c come in, and there is no, and you cannot buy the tickets just on, on, on the night, so you have to buy it before. And it's like you get all the infos, and it's like really private and small, and then you only can join the, the group if you get a link, like invite link, so it's, uh, such stuff. Right. Really different, and a lot of kinky parties mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So, like sex positive parties mm -hmm. is a big topic, at, at least in Hamburg. Like, right. yeah. <laughs> so really, yeah. really interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny you mentioned that because yeah, for our party last night, just a couple of days before, yeah, one of one of those private Telegram groups, uh, yeah, like shared our share our, shared our event. Um, but actually, one of the things that I'm kind of curious about that 
we're always interested in is how people do end up there because we've done like a little bit on Facebook boosting, a little bit on Instagram, and we post on Resident Advisor. And I, I do walk around and ask people sort of how they found out about the event, but it's a very unscientific way. Like I'll talk to like eight people, which is not representative or anything. Uh, but I'm curious about because I actually come from sort of a like data analytics background, but it becomes very difficult when because you can't necessarily get a lot of data. If, so are, how are you, when you've got figuring out, and even things like a new Instagram, where you can at least uh, add a reminder to a post, which is great, but I haven't been able to figure out a way to track how many people actually set that reminder or how many people actually open it up or whatever. So how are you finding, do people have insights, given that we're sort of talking about I guess depend, if you want to be positive, it could be localization and decentralization of marketing. A more negative, you might be saying splintering or <laughs> disappearing or whatever view of marketing. How are we thinking about yeah, figuring out how people are coming to events? What are they listening to? What are they paying attention to? What kind of numbers are you looking at? How are you finding out where, how people are getting to your events? Yeah. Uh, I can tell you from being so, North American promoters particularly mm -hmm. that the vast majority of North American promoters now are using Twitch mm -hmm. and Twitch stream figures okay. um, as as a gauge for okay. who for who it is that they're going to book really? the festivals. Yeah, okay. uh, I deal with Insomniac, who are the biggest North American promoter, and that's one of their biggest analytical tools now for bookings uh, and programming. And that was never the case prior to the pandemic. No, yeah. well, it was um, really only for gamers before yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a huge change in, the, in, in, in terms of how artists are sourced. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I think, it, it, it certainly confused a lot of artist management teams mm -hmm. and booking agencies, mm -hmm. um, particularly for the clients that weren't necessarily using Twitch during the pandemic, because those are the ones that have really, really struggled mm -hmm. coming out of the pandemic, mm -hmm. um, because they, ha they hadn't necessarily taken advantage of that technological advancement where a lot of other aspiring artists had, mm. um, and they'd use that as a kind of benchmark for really, really continuing to build their fan base globally. Right. Right. So in that respect, you know, it, it's a huge sea change. Mm -hmm. um, they're not just using Spotify numbers on mm. localization or analytical tools, mm. but, you know, things like Twitch and, you know, many other kind of online, I suppose, live streaming kind mm. of platforms and right. figures to to okay. really understand who it is that they really want to book. Okay, interesting. So when when we asked for the, when I asked for the show of hands earlier, like roughly half the room were uh, DJs or producers, and I'd love to hear from some of them around their your, your experience of doing uh, online pieces, uh, like uh, online whether it's Twitch or YouTube or uh, Facebook Live or Instagram Live or whatever. And have you seen any connection of doing that to be able to getting uh, event booking and some of the live events that we're getting getting now? Maybe someone who hasn't uh, hasn't uh, spoken yet. Don't all jump up at once. <laughs> okay, let me do it again. So, who here has been uh, streaming on Twitch during lockdown? Okay, really, only a hand. Wow. That, that surprises me. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay. And for those of you who haven't, uh, I'm curious why not, was it the technology, or just not interesting, or it's just not the same environment as being in a club, or uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Watch that doesn't knock over your drink there. Sorry. Um, hey, I'm Sergey. Uh, so back before when the pandemic started, I was still living in LA. And just before that, uh, me and a friend were playing pretty regularly at clubs and ran a monthly night. Um, and when the pandemic started, we did do some like Twitch streams and, and stuff like that. And at first, it was kind of fun because it was new and people were getting really into it. But over time, it started feeling tedious and just from a performance side, not very fun. And I know obviously it's not always meant to be fun, but just lacking that human connection and just kind of playing without any sort of audience and maybe seeing some text on screen being like, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. It felt really empty and not very gratifying, mm -hmm. um, especially coming from a place where we didn't have a super large audience. I imagine if you're getting thousands of street white people streaming it and it might be more exciting, but if you're playing smaller gigs and have a smaller audience, having your hundred people in a small club feels a lot different than having your hundred people watching on Twitch and mm -hmm. commenting once in a while. So after a while, it just wasn't interesting anymore. We didn't feel like it was a good return in our kind of time and, and effort. Okay, interesting. 
Um, yeah, hi, I'm Roman. So I also experimented with the with a Twitch setup for our collective during like the very first lockdown, and the the technical hoops were. Uh, very difficult like i could set it up because i knew how to deal with all the cables and right. uh, and the mixer but uh for other people in our collective it wasn't easy to do mm -hmm. and this was back at the time i don't know if you remember when you really didn't want to see a person mm -hmm. like you didn't want to go to someone's house right. to do so no one would come over to scre stream a show mm -hmm. and we eventually settled for just a regular radio podcast mm -hmm. right so you record a set at home and then we kind so of not it's, not, not, it's live. not live yeah okay. but we i uh i had like two sessions and I, I saw positive resonance you had people stopping by for example on my instagram live stream that to say hi mm -hmm. uh which wouldn't happen today obviously and mm -hmm. also on twitch you had uh, mm -hmm. some view account stable over an hour mm -hmm. um but it just didn't work technically Interesting. I, I, I'm curious, a couple, a couple of people mentioned earlier about sort of like different types of events and hybrid events. I'm curious about people's experiences with that because we, we started off uh, in lockdown, sort of only doing live streams. Uh, and we still do live streams once in a while, but we make them kind of more special events. Like we had an out of towners edition with people from Rotterdam and a couple of people from France. And we had a, a live AV where it was all sort of a, a, AV focused. And in our first couple of small events, we were actually live streaming from the club. Now we're not doing that. Uh, we were still recording and we posted on YouTube later. Uh, but I'm curious people's experiences of this kind of linkage, if we're, if we're talking about, because it's, 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 even though the title is Revolution of Event Marketing, it actually sounds more like it's actually a revolution in events generally, <laughs> not just event marketing. So I'm curious about if people have experience of doing hybrid events or doing events and live streaming them or not for different reasons. I mean, certainly like in, in Berlin, like here, I've got all my, my stickers on my phone that cover up the camera. Um, like no cameras is not a really conducive, okay, you can't take pictures, but we are live streaming. Like it doesn't really fit in that kind of general uh, vibe. Um, so yeah, I'm curious people's experience of, of that. I mean, because we made the decision that we didn't want to live stream because we wanted to make it feel like a special event. You had to be here in Berlin. You had to be at the club to feel that. We would share it later because we like like putting it on YouTube promotes our collective and that kind of thing. But I'm curious, is anyone else sort of experimenting or playing or have you seen? Because for me, it's, it's a tricky thing to navigate if we're sort of seeing that where Twitch numbers are important, but people actually want to be playing live and you may not like, it's, I'm curious if people have seen that kind of interconnection or how people are managing that. Yeah, right. Hello, it's Kati. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for uh, yeah those hybrid kind of events, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't fit for everyone or for mm -hmm. every party just because you're playing live in the club and you put a camera, that's not really gonna give your event any right. added value mm -hmm. maybe even in the contrary mm -hmm. it's just gonna you know why should you go to the like there's always always the live yeah. factor yeah. but yeah it, if it's just in the club and you see the dj if the dj is not amazing and everyone wants to see him then it's just boring mm -hmm. but if you have concept like circle obviously mm -hmm. they have a massive party that's sold out but they also have this amazing setup of filming it mm -hmm. So, I mean, Circle is, of course, like the, the top notch of, <laughs> of having the of boiler room sets, you know, those kind of things. Like those, of course, are the, the leaders in those things. But I think if you have your own event and you try to do something like that, you really need to think, OK, how is the online stream going to add value to this? If it's, yeah, it's like really far away, not a lot of people can come. That could be one. It's like a cool location or like an outdoor thing. I think that's always good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, really, like I think for clubs, it's mm -hmm. quite difficult to make this really, mm -hmm. to bring, yeah, value to it. Yeah. Well, I think it all depends on your artistry, what you're trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 thank you. Uh, I think it all depends on your artistry, it depends on what you're trying to sell as an artist because actually I think we kind of touch upon this situation earlier on in one of the previous discussions that it's not a case of either or, you know, you, you're always gonna have people that can't make it to a specific club night. Mm -hmm. So should you necessarily exclude them from being a part of that experience? Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as clubbing culture goes, you know, it, it all started from the underground. Mm -hmm. So you want to be inclusive mm -hmm. by saying, no, we're not gonna live stream this. Actually, 
you might be kind of setting yourself against the tide, really, in, in a lot of respects, because there's a lot of people that will necessarily want to sit at home and gather with friends, have a few beers, and, and listen, to, listen to some great DJ sets. Right. So I think it, it very much depends, like Kathy said, on, on the circumstance and the situation, but I would certainly say that it, it's certainly something that people should rather embrace than dismiss because this is a growing craze it's it's not just a fad mm -hmm. it is here to stay mm -hmm. uh, and and companies can try and kind of besmirch it or dis disregard it but regardless it, it, it's something that the younger generation i think Te technology is something that effectively the older generation mm -hmm. will tend to push away mm -hmm. because we don't we struggle to embrace technology. Mm -hmm. As the older you get, the harder it becomes to keep up. Right. But the younger guys, it's completely opposite. Mm -hmm. It's the younger kids, it's the 10, 12, 15, 16, 17 year olds, they're absolutely up to speed with this stuff. Mm -hmm. And these guys embrace it. Mm -hmm. And for them, it's not an either or situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, there's, uh, I, 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 that's a really good point. Oh, cool. <laughs> let, let me just make this point and then I'll introduce you guys. Hey, good to Hi. see you. Welcome. Cool, cool. Hi. Welcome. Good to see you in person. Um, just I'll, I'll let you get settled uh, for a second, then I'll bring it over to you. Um, yeah, I, I think there can be some creative things. And that's a really good idea because one of the streams we did, um, we did a, a fundraiser for um, a Ukraine uh, support organization. And uh, in the middle of the night, so we, we had like two live acts play. Uh, and then we actually had a video call set up uh, with They actually had a bus at the Poland-Ukraine border. So they were actually on the live stream, but also sort of projected. And then we had a, a camera held up so they could actually see everybody in the club that had raised the money for them. But they were showing us the bus and talking about what they were doing and the value of that kind of stuff and what was happening. And it was a real like there's the only way we could do that was through that online kind of technology. But it was actually but but I have to say as an event organizer, it, may, it was pretty stressful. Okay, we've got live streams and cameras and a Zoom call to Ukraine and, and to Poland with like, and another guy from their office in London. It's like, hey, I hope this works. Uh, but uh, but we were a pretty small event. It was only like 60 people. So it wasn't like a, doing it in front of a, a big uh, massive arena or anything. But yeah, that's definitely some interesting things to talk about. So, so we'll switch over this way. So you made it. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so yeah, um, we are really sorry we stuck a bit. In sure, sure. I'll, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves in a minute, but just to kind of uh, bring up a bit of a recap, we've been having a bit of a discussion on sort of what was this idea, like what is the revolution in online marketing and had a, I think a really interesting conversation. And I think for me sort of comes back on it's not just marketing that's changing, but events are changing, um, not in, in terms of the types of events, doing hybrid, online, a lot of local events, people trying to figure out how to do that and also sort of make this linkage between online culture and things moving in, uh, moving back to real life, but also seeing a bit of lingering resistance, people being a little wanting to buy tickets later, whether they're concerned about something being canceling, another lockdown coming, being close to a conflict and those kind of things. So, yeah, we've been having a conversation about that. But uh, yeah, now I'd like to welcome uh, Christoph and uh, Nicholas from uh, PartyMate, who have a lot of experience in event marketing in general, but also have some cool stuff to talk about. So. Are you guys, can you breathe and introduce yourselves? Yeah, or do you, <laughs> okay, so why, why don't you introduce yourselves uh, and then, uh, yeah, we can continue the conversation and um, yeah, talk a little bit and then we can maybe have some questions from the audience as well. Perfect. Okay, yeah, that? yeah, I will start. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Nicholas. I'm founder of PartyMate. Um, was like five years ago when I had the idea in Miami. Thought, okay, it would be cool to have one app, which is like finding all the parties, and I'm very lazy, so I thought, well, <laughs> there should be an app for that. <laughs> so yeah, then the first idea came up, and uh, then I founded the company, and then Christoph, a good friend, uh, joined last year, and I'm very happy about that. So, so my uh, question was that I started back in this with mechanical engineering, but then I stopped because it was too boring, and I worked for Solomon and Club Ego in Hamburg. Um, and from then on, I worked for some people. And the last six years, I'm the tour manager of Stefan Botzen. So I know a lot of clubs and situations, festivals. And that's why uh, we decided to make it together because I have the context and the, the view on the reality. And he is the guy behind the decks. <laughs> so, right. and yeah, party mate in general, I thought it's an amazing idea because I know everybody uses in our area, a resident advisor, but nobody or the most of them don't like it so much. So, and there was no other thing 
which uh, uh, which shows all the events in the world and especially for all genres i mean resident advisor shows you like techno and electronic stuff but what about the people who still uh, listen to hip hop music or pop music why should they don't have such an app so and of course there are also apps like dice and like uh, eventum uh, or eventbrite but they all show only the events from their ticket store so there's not this one platform where you can see all the events and that's all about the idea in general right so maybe before we get more into detail on, on the party mate stuff so you both had a lot of experience in in events and sort of plugged in the event marketing uh, industry in general we talked a little bit before you arrived about some of the things that we were seeing uh, what are some i'm curious about what are some of the the general shifts and trends, not just in, in the apps and sort of finding things, but how you're starting to see event marketing and the event industry in general changing that kind of led to you thinking, okay, this party mate can actually fill a, fill a gap in that. Right, so what I think, what we all see that there's a shift to digital marketing, so away from classic marketing, but it, um, yeah, it all, it's still existing, the traditional marketing, like a lot of posters, banners and stuff like that, it's still important. Um, but yeah, we can see that a lot of people across the globe actually are using digital marketing to reach the goal. Uh, what we see also that uh, there's this problem that people are spending a bunch of money um, for Facebook or Instagram and actually cannot track the conversion. Mm -hmm. So they just spend a lot of money and maybe like the, their customers and guests are coming from, from that mm -hmm. advertisement campaign, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a challenge, I think. I mean, in the end, it's like classic marketing. If you hang on such a, a poster, nobody knows uh, yeah. who, how many people are coming because of this poster. Mm -hmm. But digital marketing, kind of, you can track a bit, mm -hmm. but not enough. So, and I think the classic marketing is still interesting, mm -hmm. but only because to have it like it's part of the game. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I think which helps is a lot is like guerrilla marketing. If you have new ideas on the street, that's a like flyer in bars or so on. I don't think that people so much anymore recognize. And in the end, we all talk about sustainability. Mm -hmm. And so poster and uh, flyer are not uh, anymore the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, So, so so that, that's some sort of thoughts about the event marketing. Have you actually have you seen changes in in the kind of events that people are doing? Because it's been interesting with, I mean, yeah, there's, all, there's always been a range of electronic music. But one of the things we talked about before is that certainly pre-pandemic, I certainly saw it a bit too bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger clubs, bigger festivals, bigger, bigger, bigger. And now it actually seems maybe there's more of a trend to smaller and local and more independent. Are, is, does that ring true for you? Are you seeing changes in the kind of events that are happening? I think it was already before before Corona. Okay. That there are a lot of small festivals, like, I mean, around Berlin, like, I would say like 50 to 100 small festivals. Mm -hmm. And even we don't know all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, and the world is getting, of course, bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And we have like, sort festivals, like Melt Festival, mm -hmm. they think always about to getting more green mm -hmm. but if you look outside of germany mm -hmm. i didn't see it so much that anybody is talking about uh, green festivals mm -hmm. it's really sadly only a german or maybe europe thing yeah i think uh corona consolidated also a lot of uh, clubs mm -hmm. so uh maybe yeah accelerated the trend to make bigger but mm -hmm. from the personal perspective like i really enjoy smaller clubs mm -hmm and have it special there, so, yeah. Cool. Great, uh, well, so you mentioned part, uh, Party Mate a little bit at the beginning. Do you guys want to talk a little bit what uh, Party Mate is and what it actually does? Maybe and just a few words, sure. yeah. Can we? Yeah, uh, the presentation should be on here. I'm not sure how to access. Oh, perfect, thanks. Uh, oh, there it is, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, this okay. was a presentation we made for Ushiaia and Ibiza. Um, so, it was not general just for here, but you have an idea about, uh, you say, in general, the vision to have uh, one platform and integrate all the things of the nightlife. I mean, we don't want to do the booking or stuff like this, but uh, we want to bring the people closer to the promoter. 
and what we have in there, like special things. Uh, the most interesting, we call it, it's a moment custom sized, uh, customized app for all venues. That means that you, uh, that you have this party made app and as soon you uh, arrive to the club, uh, you can check in via geotagging or uh, with a QR code and the app changes in your colors, your logo, your information, and it feels like you have your own app, but not paying 100,000 of euros for your own app. <laughs> so and that's like, we think it's super interesting uh, for clubs and uh, festivals to have an app without spending this money. And you can see a little mock-up here from Soho, uh, Dubai. Uh, which has like only their events from all venues uh, on the phone. Yeah. And out of uh, the Corona check-in, we made as well for like festivals in Hamburg, like Ripperband Festival uh, or Elb Jazz Festival, we made the club check-in. It's at the moment, it's in the beginning uh, phase. Is it pizza mode? Uh -huh. Is it in beta mode? No, it's no. already working, but we still work on it. Okay. Um, but the idea behind is like uh, uh, to have like the miles and more of clubbing. Like if you enter a club, you can earn points. Uh, and maybe if you go like 10 times to a club, you get a drink or something like this to have more connection between club and uh, the people. But this is the part which is uh, still growing or starting. Um, what we have now, what's pretty new, but not new to everybody of you, is a guest list tool. There are already some guest list tools in the world, but it's pretty expensive. And we said, okay, we do a flat fee for normal clubs. We say, okay, 100 euros a month for the guest list tool. And for smaller ones, you say, yeah, like, uh, like a small bar, we would never say, no, you can't earn it, you can't use it. We say then, okay, go for it. You get it for free because we don't want to earn money with it. With, uh, with guest list tools, it's more about to get the people in the app because the app is only working when we have enough people. Yeah, and maybe important for, for this conversation here in general is that all, this, all these tools are basically in your hand. It's like a toolbox and you collect um, the connection. So actually you collect the connection to your guests. So even after, like or on the party, you can uh, send push notifications to your, to your customers, to your, to your guests. And even afterwards, uh, you don't need to spend a lot of mar uh, marketing money um, for Facebook or someone. Uh, you have the direct connection to your, to your guest and can also send them messages afterwards. So you have a direct marketing channel. perfect. So on to this point, it, we thought, okay, that's for us a perfect life cycle of uh, a guest. Like, it's first thing is you have a ticket, uh, then you get a next step, uh, an email, hey, we're looking forward to see you, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and maybe some upselling. Uh, and the next is you arrive to the location and the app already notice via geotagging that you're around, you get a push notification, and then the push notification says, hey, the right lane is guest list lane, left lane is this, or please take care of this or that. So it's every f you can choose whatever you like. And then after the bottom line, you're in the club. Um, the ticket scan or guest list scan is also with the app connected. And uh, the club knows already that the guy who bought this ticket is now in the club. And you can uh, also integrate the cashless payment if you like and send like push notifications, like at a festival, you can say, okay, the headliner will start one hour later or whatever. So there are like tons of millions of possibilities uh, to customize it to your event location, to your festival or club. And after, uh, when the guy is leaving, you say like, thank you, see you soon. And maybe you uh, send a push out and say, okay, um, this guy, drinks a lot of vodka energy or he likes a lot of beer maybe we can offer him next time something in this direction or we know already okay he likes this music we can send him okay just for you um the next really good show was uh, i don't know uh, guy gerber will be in five months 
uh, you can already buy a ticket now. Or you have maybe another club or bar and you do, can do some cross-marketing. That's our kind of an idea to make a digital revolutionary nightlife. Right. And I think that's enough for pa from Pali Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I yeah, just some... All right. I just... So, I think... No. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it like that. All uh, right. Before Corona, I had a lot of patients. Oh, sorry, could you just, uh, pass the mic over? So, yeah, we're recording the session, so the yeah. audience needs to speak into the mics, too. Perfect. Uh, before Corona, I had auto business, um, which was called uh, Radio Events. Uh, and we had the aim of having the customer experience more better. Um, and I think that really the ideas that we had, but we needed to stop because there were no parties. I think you will be really interested uh, in those. So... That's why I made uh, a picture of it. I will get in touch with you. <laughs> yeah, <amazing. laughs> thank you. Yeah. So that's a, also for us really important. We are a young company. We are still growing and we are really open to discuss with all the people. And if you say like, okay, I want to use this guest list tool, but I need this special point. I need, I don't know, whatever. Uh, we can make it happen for you. And we don't say, okay, that makes like thousand euros. No, we say, okay, we do that for you. We are very flexible in development, still young, dynamic. Awesome. Yeah, this well like. <laughs> we are not Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks. Uh, just, so just before I turn it over to more questions from the audience, could you just flip back to the uh, that sort of life cycle uh, slide again? Yeah, so, so I'm curious if anyone has, uh, so if you have any questions generally uh, for Nicholas or Kristoff, but I'm also curious, given the conversation we had before they arrived, we were talking about sort of different evolutions and changing and, and events and so on. I'm curious how your sort of interpret, like given your experience sort of you know, whether it's booking or running events or doing these different things is connecting to this cycle or is this kind of fitting or are you seeing things that you that also could be added or different pieces? And yeah, but so yeah, I'm curious your thoughts about that or any other questions you have for Nicholas and uh, uh, Christoph as well. And we can hand the mic over if anyone has a question or a comment. Yeah, also critics are very, very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the perils of not having a wireless mic. <laughs> uh, hi, guys. Is this on? Uh, yeah, yeah we're, it's on. We, we just don't hear it through the speakers. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so um, my question essentially is, this is um, your app, your service is oriented towards clubs mainly, right? Because I'm running a small collective and I'm wondering how could this be beneficial to us? Um, I know a lot of people are sensitive to installing apps and um, at certain, like pushing information to you, uh, users, um, we do that through Telegram channels. Like if you're at the party, hey, this is happening right now, uh, basically that. So I'm wondering how could this help me as someone who uh, organizes parties at clubs and deals with their promoters or just, just management at, at, the, at local clubs here? So... In general, we are open for all kinds of events. Like next week, we are helping uh, uh, a company from San Francisco to run an event uh, at Davos. It's a World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. So we are generally open for every kind of event and we try to help. So And we have a bunch of small tools like analytics tool when you check in and you can uh, see what's your crowd, like which age uh and gender and everything so and from there out you can maybe target your marketing better we have the guest list tool as well to help you to invite people and yeah with the push notification you are in direct contact um we're working on small other tools like um the cashless payment etc etc so if you say i would need this one or that one we could do that for you as well we are open for that um but we are not like, <clears throat> we don't have like uh, promoter tools like to arrange the night, like if you want to plan uh, or you want to do an itinerary. We are also thinking about it, but we are not on it already. But to the one question, it's more for promoters or guests, the idea or for visitors. The general idea was of the app was uh, the visitor because we have this one big calendar with all the events in it. Mm -hmm. 
and we crawl at the moment all events from Facebook. And that's, I think, pretty much at the moment, the most complete app uh, with events. Yeah. And regarding uh, your concerns to install an app, that's very true. Uh, like there was a shift in the, in, the, in the society. And this is why we also uh, made the guest list tool a bit more separated from PartyMate. So you can send out emails, SMS, stuff like that to invite your people. Uh, if they don't want to download right. the app. And it's all also connected with the app, but not a must have. I think that's a real, you know, maybe you could pass the mic over and I'll steal the chance to ask a question as well. I think that you're about the collective, that's very similar to us. Because one of the things that I will be very interested in is uh, I, I just can't stand WhatsApp group chats. <laughs> but I have like 90 of them because I've got one for every event with all the artists and I've got one for our collective organizers, one for the collective organizers, plus all the extra people like photographers and that kind of thing. And it's just... I don't even like opening WhatsApp in the morning. Um, but uh, something like that could actually be very interesting, like to have like subsections per event that's for the artists, because all those kind of but, but critical conversations about what time sound check, uh, I forgot my XLR cables, can someone bring an extra one? Things that we definitely don't want to push to the audience, but um, yeah, moving something like that could be a really interesting uh, tool for collectives and so on. So. Sorry, yeah, here and then back over here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you just said that it's not really like the promoter part in the tool. Um, but I think this actually complements what a promoter does really well because I think very few clubs or maybe festivals a little bit more because it's like one or two events per year. But especially if you saw regular club nights, you would r rarely invest in something that was send push notifications or that says, hey, come to the main room because whoever plays now or something like that. But I think this is like, there's a very small portion of people that are freaked out by stuff like geotagging, like how does it know where I am right now and stuff. But I think the majority of punters and party goer they actually like that, you know, they come up and they're like, oh yeah, I just arrived. And now they say, welcome, or, yeah. whoa, I got a free drink because I, I don't know, showed up early or something. Yeah. So I think all these little extra benefits when you go out, I think they can make a club night even more special. And that basically takes off the work from the promoters mm -hmm. or from the club, but gives them that extra bit of, yeah, it, like elevated customer experience, if you like. It's a bit more fresh. Yeah, exactly. And I, I personally, I really like the, what you said, like the miles and more kind of approach. You know, I think, yeah, a lot of times when like it's probably a little bit more commercial. I don't know if it's really good for underground events or anything. But if you think about going to, if, I don't know, you go to Copenhagen to go out or something. I have a, just to, as a comparison, I have, a, I have an app called Untapped where you can scan beers and like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tap into cool. beers. <laughs> and I would drink the beers anyway, but now I'm really hooked on this whole gamification that every time you have like a five white beers or something, it's like, hey, you tried five white beers and you get like levels. So even, <laughs> so I'm literally like, I'm get, like uh, that's like my new hobby to just try like all these different beers and I would drink them anyway. But that way I'm just like way more excited about doing it. And I think that could work the same way with clubs. Like you're in Berlin and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna try out like, but like, and it's like, oh, if you come to the club four times in a year or something, you get, I don't know, discount on the next ticket or I don't whatever you know yeah, but have, I think there's so much potential in yeah. making that even more fun or like doing bar hopping or whatever That's you know we so we thought about and I love that it. actually yeah I love that <laughs> and we have as well like the idea to make like challenges that you say okay if you go to this this and this club you're like the Rivala Straße held or something like this mm -hmm. so uh that way we had already the idea and we, we already worked on it. So it's already possible, but we have to bring everybody in to make it really happen. But that's mm -hmm. what you said, it's a gamification. Everybody likes it. So, and the other thing we had already that we thought, okay, what people would be all have fun with, but like, uh, like uh, what's the app called? Uh, Runtastic. Like if you mm -hmm. dance the whole weekend, mm -hmm. after the weekend, we connected this with your health, uh, connection yeah. and then you see oh, okay i make 2000 yeah. steps in this club and 3000 steps yeah. in this club yeah. and you have like uh, something to post on monday oh yeah. this weekend was really getting hard well, i was in this club this club <laughs> so <laughs> that I, uh, yeah. the gamification I, is more modern now yeah. than the classic of course they are the bad guys so, and yeah. they want to go dark and nobody should know blah 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 
But there are a lot of bunch of people who have really fun with going out and want to show to other people. I, I think that's really really interesting because even especially the step like I share that with my friends all the time because my average step count on my iPhone is like seven thousand eight thousand. Then, then my Berghain nights are like thirty five thousand steps, and it's just funny like these big spikes. Like I can actually see who yeah what what my club nights were. Question right. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah, so time. yeah, we're just we've got like <laughs> we got like ten minutes to the the end of the session, so people may be going to the next uh, next thing. But uh, cool. Uh, any other uh, questions or comments? Yeah. Have you, have you guys, have you guys thought about maybe partnering up with um, a dating app? <laughs> so we were thinking about. Do you know Tinder Social? I do. Yeah. It was just a period of time. So we were thinking, yeah, okay, well, that was a cool feature of Tinder, yeah. but somehow it, they got rid of it. So that would be a cool extension or like cooperation yeah. or whatever. But then, uh, then the, I, the question is, it, it's, it's better for the app to have such things in it or not? Is so it creepy? <laughs> it's a bit creepy then. Yeah. We had as well the idea like uh, everybody who joins a night and yeah. You have like a, a list you can show or not, and then you can uh, talk to the people in the club. But I think that there are so many detailed things. Uh, I think to make the app run, run its marketing part and everything better now and a functional calendar. And then from there, on, we see step by step what the people like and work around. But it's a it's a point on the list. <laughs> <laughs> we have a long well, list. I, I think you guys should explore it. I'll tell you yeah. what. I work with a big North American dating app that's based around um, people's musical choices. That's uh, it's, it's called Binary. It's, mm. it's only in North America. Okay. You guys probably might have heard of it, but actually, it's doing really well in North American Canada, and and they're very much hooked into the nightlife scene. Um, oh. And I think that this type of app could really, really work for festival promoters mm -hmm. and then hooking people up that go to festivals on their own. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, there's large swathes of people that don't necessarily go with large groups of people. Mm -hmm. And this type of app could be perfect for bringing other people, like minded people, together. Mm -hmm. It's also part we are talking to a lot of companies, like yeah. uh, mainly the ticket companies, like Eventum, Ticketmaster. Yeah. Everyone wants to be in this app as well. And we are open-minded for that. We are like, we are not saying, no, we are not close. Come to us and let's see what happens. And I'm curious, do, do those companies have any concerns about being on the same app with their competitors? Like you mentioned some of the things, like Eventbrite only shows their own event. Like would, uh, is Ticketmaster okay being with Ticketmaster and Eventbrite and other people within the same store, basically? So they want to be exclusive, but right. we want to be an open platform. Right. So we want everyone on this on this mm -hmm. platform. Otherwise, it will not it will not suit. It's then another app, which mm -hmm. is just doing this. Just the Ticketmaster app or just the Exactly. And on the other side, they are really interested to see what the competitors do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that. That's they like to have their like market market cap and yeah, yeah, see yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah okay. We we are not letting them right now. Any other questions or thoughts? Yeah, I'm not sure where the mic is at the moment. Oh. <laughs> he was loud enough, I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you got picked up by the mics. <laughs> hey, uh, have you guys considered using this as also an, as an analytics collection for the actual event uh, owners and managers? Yeah. So that's that's a statistic <laughs> you actually anime. get when you when people check into your uh, into your venue or event. So you have like there um, a view where you can see your recurring visitors, like how many people are coming regularly. Yeah. Uh, then you guess your VIPs. Okay, VIPs is special. Then it needs to be connected to your reservation tool or something. You have the bump time. So and we also like this is this is. Not, not a feature right now, like the prediction. This is something we are working on with AI. Um, you have the age, age range, gender distribution, the origin. So you have a lot of stuff. Um, it actually makes a lot of fun uh, the moment you, you use this data to upgrade your marketing campaigns because you actually know what is your status now, maybe where you want to go. And so, yeah. Cool. And we have <laughs> the idea out of it. Like if you say, I want to do in, in four months with this artist mm -hmm. a party, we want like to give you an idea how many people could come to this party mm -hmm. because of weather and our analytics and everything. Like to give you a little help. Yeah. What, what are the cost implications for venues that want to take this up? 
Sorry. Sorry. I didn't get the question. Sorry. Again. What, sorry. What cost implications for venues that wish to operate this within their system? It's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. In general, well, next question. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in general, uh, for the standard things, we are free. But yeah. if you want to have like really, really custom sized mm -hmm. things, we have t to do some uh, sort of service fee and everything. But we are really low on it. Like, uh, if we talk about like a club, Soho Garden Dubai, which we work with, it's like uh, we say, okay, for all their venues, they have like 14 venues uh, in, in two locations. We said, okay, uh, we can do it like for 500 uh, euros a month pair uh, bigger venue. So yeah, like yeah. one venue have seven yeah. smaller venues. And so they pay like thousand euros a month, mm -hmm. but then for 14 venues and a lot of custom sized things. Mm -hmm. So we have a very modular yeah. pricing yeah. pricing range. Yeah, yeah. You can actually just sign up right now on, on uh, PartyMate Pro, it's called, and you have access to your venue. You can see the analytics. People can already check into your venue. You just have to print out the QR code mm -hmm. or convince your, your guests to actually use the geotagging check-in. Mm -hmm. This is working already. You can see the analytics. You can also use the push notifications. That's all set up for free for you. Mm -hmm. And when you want to use the guest list, for example, it's 100 bucks. So yeah, it's more you want. But uh, like I said already, mm -hmm. if you're a small collective and you come to us, I would love to use it. We, we would never say no. Yeah. Correct. Okay, this is good. So I'm going to totally hijack this conversation for my own personal <laughs> use now. Um, but just w one other uh, question about, I guess, sort of the, related to the, the, the ticketing, but also the modular pieces. Um, is it flexible enough? So if we, if we were collective, so we have events that happen at different clubs. And sometimes we do open airs or sometimes we just do like a, a stamp stitch on a Sunday afternoon at Templehofer and just like, yeah, come, come and hang out. Is this flexible so that we could actually have multiple ads at different locations, but still collect those overall statistics? Right. So you can you can either print out a QR code for just your page. So right. we call it pages, actually, right. what you have. Um, or you can do it per per venue. So right. you can okay. even do it for every floor, like Reeperbahn right. Festival. Right. Use it for every single floor mm -hmm. and say uh, they check like who's in now and who's what's going out so right. in the end they could say okay this artist had so many uh, people and next time i give him a better play time mm -hmm. because he's more interesting than the other one right. okay. so, this right. is what Reeperbahn festival actually did in 2021 right. with their data which we collected to 2020. okay yeah. So they're actually specific to artists. Just look at okay, he you know, this, this DJ was booked in a small room, but had like the room overflowing. No one can get in. This big okay, interesting. Okay, yeah, hijack over back to the people <laughs> that are actually in the room. Sorry. Thank you. Hi, this is Gary. Um, thinking also looking at these analytics and thinking also on the user side, I think it might be a good idea. You you guys talked before about. Um, how when you, for example, an open idea is when you go to certain amount of clubs, you get something or something like this. So maybe it would be a good idea to have some sort of, not analytics, but showing you, as I could see, how many events I've gone in a funny way, kind of. Like, hey, you've been in 10 clubs in Berlin, uh, 20 clubs in Germany, in Europe, and so on. So it, I could see in a funny way in a year, how many places I've gone? Because yeah, that's how it, how it works. So it's and already we have in the membership system. So it's not not broke down to like not collected to the to the year. This like your Spotify history, right? Like how much you yeah. listen to? No, 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 not like that. Just like imagine like you open it, and it's like kind of you can see like your like kind of collectibles. Mm -hmm. So you're going places, yeah, collecting sorry. not yeah. sort of a list, right? Not and not not like, listing numbers. We have to already the idea and we work on it that like the run testing like if you have like this and this challenge and it worked out you get this tag like you're a good dancer or whatever so like the gamification we already talked about it we're working on it um and it's already like half of it is already ready right so you can collect badges so yeah. for example hey i have been to berkheim like here you can see <laughs> <laughs> So, I made it. <laughs> 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 cool. Yeah. 
So we're, we're, we're just coming up on seven, maybe time for like one or two more final questions before we wrap up. And are, are you guys going to be around uh, this evening and tomorrow as well? Okay, great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, right in the very back there. Once again, I'm not sure where the mic is. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's what's just in general. That's yeah. a, is a look how uh, the normal people see the app. On the left side, it's a calendar. Okay. In the middle is like the club. On the right side is the event. Okay, cool, cool. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, did you already thought about like a festival planner? So for the customer, they can plan out their own festival experience because that's actually what I would need and use. And also for the festivals, it would be nice to just yeah go to this app and do their lineup there and then the customer can play uh, can plan their own trip we already talked with some festivals mm -hmm. like CU festival in south germany and some other a lot of festivals try to do still their own app mm -hmm. the problem about their own app is like a service fee in years like 20 to fifty thousand euros that the app looks quite good and uh, this is the perfect uh, uh, idea for what you, uh, the app can do for everybody. Mm -hmm. you, can do, you can do your Berlin plan. Like if you're from Spain and you come to Berlin and say, oh, I want to plan my weekend, you can uh, uh, attend the parties in the app and then you have your own plan. And as well, this works for a festival. Yeah, for sure. Cool. All right. Well, that's uh, probably good to make. Can you just flip to your contact slide and leave that up there? Sure. So, um, yeah. So th thanks very much for uh, for coming and thanks very much for attending the session. And thank, thank you for, you for uh, fighting through <laughs> the traffic to, uh, to, to actually make it here. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for all the questions. Uh, let's, uh, grab the contact information here. Definitely feel free to uh, connect with uh, Christoph and uh, Nicholas uh, after this session and uh, through the evening or maybe one of the parties. I'm sure you can track them down on Party Mate. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> thanks very much for coming and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest. Of oh, and actually, sorry, one segue just quickly. Again, totally self-serving. You mentioned sustainability. So in 30 minutes, I'll be moderating a panel on sustainability in the electronic music scene uh, with Camille from Bye Bye Plastic Foundation, which is trying to get rid of uh, single-use plastic in clubs and festivals, uh, and also uh, with uh, Roxandra, who runs an orga organization called uh, Travel Perk, uh, which is trying to reduce CO2 emissions for travel, and also another organization looking to reduce waste in all kind of like the party decorations that you see. Uh, and then I'll be talking about some of my own academic research on more of the social and justice dimensions of sustainability. And a sneak preview sur survey I did at Superbooth last weekend, where I talked to 25 modular synth manufacturers about uh, sus their sustainability practices. So back in the same room in 30 minutes. So that's my self-serving promotional <laughs> part. But thank you very much. Thank you.